Okay, there is the saying that we like to use all the time that the youths are leaders of tomorrow. Uh, but when that tomorrow is bleak because our teenagers are diagnosed more and more with depression and other mental health problems, then there's a problem. So we're going to be looking at this topic, more Nigerian teenagers diagnosed with depression and other mental health problems. And our guest this morning is Dada Olua Tosin, the Chief Nursing Officer, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja. Good morning and welcome to the program. Okay, Manos may be attending to a mental case right now. Uh, that's just a joke uh, out of the way now. But we'll be talking with her. It's a worrisome thing that a lot of times we find youths on the streets. Some of them are just roaming. Uh, they are, you know, some of them are really, I don't know the word to use. I'm not allowed to use uh, a word that is now derogatory, but they have mental problems. Uh, some people are depressed and you don't even know that they are depressed. They're walking, they're smiling, they're laughing. They are mixing up with friends sometimes, uh, but some other times they are on their own and they were finding the symptoms, but we need to all care. We will find out what the causes of these mental problems and depressions are and how we can proffer solutions to them, whether through policy or drug or any other form of support. We'll be still talking with Dada Olua Tosin, the chief nursing officer of, uh, in Ikeja, teaching hospital and as soon as we're able to reconnect with her we will do that well for now we'll just take a very short break we'll be back okay we're glad to know you're still there we sincerely apologize for the little hitch that we had we're back now with uh uh, Dada Olua Tosin, Chief Nursing Officer, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Ikeja. We're talking about mental health this morning. Uh, once again, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Presenter. Good morning, Ruth at home. Okay, we say more Nigerian uh, teenagers di diagnosed with depression, other mental health problems. That is a worrisome thing. Uh, let's just begin with... Uh, with causes of these um, depression, uh, if, you, if you may. Good morning, one more time. Before we begin to talk about the causes of depression, let me briefly define what depression itself is. Depression is a state of extreme sadness. That is, in which you describe that there is loss of interest in pleasurable activities. That is, those things that the individual that is affected by depression, those things the person would have done with joy, with the, with wholeheartedly, they just lose interest in doing them. And well, according to World Health Organization, they defined depression as a state of extreme sadness characterized by loss of interest in pleasurable activities lasting more than six weeks. Having explained this we want to talk about the causes of depression the depression itself has various causes one when we talk about the biological causes we are talking about the dopamine serotonin factor in the brain we want to talk about stress that is issues of life loss of loved one bereavement and things and things like that but because we are talking about teenagers today one of the things that could cause depression in them now is because they have growing awareness as a result of having a lot of information about their mental health. That could be a cause. Then, too, so we want to talk about academic pressure, in which we discover that um, these children, more and more times, they are being sent to school when they are not fully prepared for the challenges ahead. So to say that you now find a child of nine years old in secondary school, by the time they are 13, 14, they, want to, they are out of the secondary school. They have not really concretized their, uh, they have not really developed their concrete states before we move them to their abstract state. And as a result of this, they, many a times they are not able to cope with the academic stress 
itself. Then we want to look at dysfunctional family. When we talk about dysfunctional family, we are talking about absent parents, in which you discover that the parents are not just there. The father is out, the children rarely get to see them, they don't have anybody to talk to. And when they have questions that bother their mind, the only thing they want to do is just to go to social media and find information. And at times they talk to their friend, they appear in peer groups. Many at times they are misled by this. Then the negative impact of the current situation of the nation itself could adversely affect their mental health. These are many more who cause depression in Nigeria, Nigeria teenagers nowadays. Okay, um, <clears throat> this, this, this topic is on depression and generally on uh, mental health problems. Health uh, but problems, you, you yes. made You made a, a comment about one of the causes being that these children go to school too early, if I got you right. Are you saying, yes. um, okay, what is the actual age that a child should be before... Uh, that child can be taken to school or a particular level of school. Because nowadays, maybe because the parents are busy or whatever excuse they give, children six months, as early as six, six months, are, are taken to the crash. From there, they move to the nursery school, from nursery school to no breeding space at all. Even during holidays, they have lessons here and there and all that. So you just made a point, and I'm wondering, is this really a bad thing? And if it is bad, what is the recommendation, especially the recommended school age uh, for nursery, then primary, secondary, if uh, we have those? Good. We are looking at, when we talk about the recommended entry point for children in primary school, the recommended age is between two and three years. The recommended age for them to enter primary school. But when we want to talk about primary one, at least by the time they are entering primary one, they should be five. And by the time they are leaving secondary school, they should oh, be You mean, they you mean two to three for nursery school? That's how I understand For nursery school, when yes. we talk about nursery school, let's look at age two to three. Yes, okay. Two to three is the appropriate age. Then by the time they are done with their nursery one, nursery two, entering into primary school, they should be close to five, between five and six. And... Normally, by the time they are going to leave the second, uh, leave from primary school to secondary school, they should be between 11 and 12. That's why you see some institutions stipulated specifically that that child should be should be 12, 11 years of age by October. That is that October means September, October. By the time they are resuming back to for another academic session in Lagos State, Lagos State will not allow any child that is less than 11 to enter JS1, except if there is falsification of age, where the parents will now go and swear a bit, a bit or bring up a false birth certificate for that child. But on the parents' part, all we look at is our own selfish interest. Of course, I won't call it selfish because many a times we look at it that we have to make ends meet, forgetting that these children um, mental state is equally more important. So the time when you now send them to school, they are not able to cope very well. They are not able to cope effectively with their peers. Somebody who is 11, 12, will, the way that person will reason will be far, far different from the way someone who is 19 will reason. And that's where the complete uh, and abstract thinking comes in. By the time they are supposed to be ready for their abstract thinking, age-wise, they will not be there. And when this begins to happen, the child is not doing well academically. There is low self-esteem because he, begins, he or she begins to look at himself or herself that what my mates are doing, I am not able to do. Now, back to the parents at home who are paying so much to fix that child in school. They begin to make various judgmental statements and also child names. All these things has an impact on the health of that child. Now, when we talk about other mental health problems too, we want to put in schizophrenia and all this, uh, we want to put schizophrenia there. When we get to put schizophrenia, those ones, they, they, when, they, when somebody is even depressed, they are able to cope because at some point in time, there is remission of symptoms. 
Is schizophrenia too? There could be a remission of symptoms, but schizophrenia, a schizophrenic patient cannot cannot be compared to somebody who is depressed. Schizophrenia can render an individual, um, as in, I wouldn't want to use the word invalid now. It's, that person can not even at times be useful to himself, talk less contributing to his own uh, activities of daily living. But a person with depression, when we talk about mild, moderate depression, they are still able to cope with psychotherapy, with um, medications, they are able to cope. Schizophrenia too does, but then you cannot compare the rate of their uh, the rate at which they get better. You cannot compare it with schizophrenia. Let me just ask you this. Maybe uh, I don't know how it would sound, but does this craze for nannies for people, some other people to take care of our children, also contribute to uh, mental health of the children? Uh, because a lot of mothers leave their responsibility to house helps and all that. Children don't get to see their own mothers. And so there's, there's some kind of uh, uh, disconnect. Do you think it also contributes in some way to the mental health of a child? Yes, it contributes greatly. Greatly, it contributes. A child who is six months old and you have to take to a nanny or you employ a nanny to take care of that child, one, there is no bonding between that child and the mother. The only mother figure that the child will be seeing will be the nanny. And God helping that mother or parents, the nanny now happens to be a bully. That child will hear lots on internet where various forms of um, sexual abuse, child abuse comes in. When all these are integrated into a child, right from their toddlerhood, it goes a long way to affect them later in life. So leaving a child with a nanny might not really be in the best interest of that child. But because of the way the economy is now, well, parents don't have much option than to do that. But then, to some extent, the mental health of that child would be affected somehow. Except the parents are able to compensate for those periods that they were not present with that child. And how can they compensate for this? By spending enough time, no time could be enough for you to spend with your child. But anytime you are with that child, make those periods memorable for them. Make it leave a lasting impact on them that they will not have a truth. They have the appearance. Okay. Uh, well, we're running out of time, but we need to cover some, po some points here. Um, now, uh, I, know, I know, or you have, you the experts have always said uh, wrong use of drugs is another point that leads to mental health issues and depression and all that. Uh, but let's cut to the solutions. Do you what do you think, by way of policy, that government can do to help reduce this uh, stress or this uh, scourge? And then uh, also, what can the individuals do to help to reduce this uh, problem of mental health and depression? Let's start with the government. Okay. Let, let, let's start with the government. Mm -hmm. If the government can just formulate a policy, number one, stating precisely the age at which they want a child, the entry point into schools for children, and they actually make it work, that will help. Two, so, the issue of people just entering pharmacies, chemists, buying medication, although they are able, they've been able to put some law into practice, but then, because they will tell you when you get to some pharmacy store, they will tell you without a prescription, you cannot get a particular medication. But all these ones, when you have your money, there is nothing you cannot get in Nigeria, prescription or no prescription. So the government should still help us to look in that direction. Then, back to the parent, we would encourage, when a woman is pregnant, we always advocate that they should please start their antenatal clinic promptly. Some will wait till they are, four, they are five, six months before they start their antenatal care. But usually we tell them, once a woman discovers that you are pregnant, you can just walk into the hospital and tell them you want to register. 
Although in some government hospitals, in health centers, someone's once said it, that they will tell them to wait till three months. But then they should please do something about it. Once a woman is pregnant, the first three months, we always advocate for folic acid. If they take this medication, this folic acid, there's something you can easily get. You take it religiously. By the time you, and when you take folic acid, what it does essentially is, it prevents a problem in a child that we call neural tube defects. It prevents such things from happening to the fetus in your group. So when those drugs are being taken and you start your antenatal clinic early enough, they are able to discover any deviation from normal and appropriate measures are being taken. Then the government tool has really helped with the six months maternity leave they gave. Although they told us it's just for the first two children, but then it is enough time for a woman to bond with a child because it is their developing years. So with this, I think, and parents too should understand at this point that the mental health of their children is far, far more important than the money that they, they are, we are running helter skelter to acquire. Although we'll say, yes, we want to get the money to be able to take care of them. But when you now acquire the money and the child for whom you are trying to gather all this wealth comes down with mental illness, who now spends the money? Those are some of the things that we really need to understand. When we talk about mental health, what people say most times is money. But we need to understand that money is not everything. At times when you don't have money, your mood will change. But then, what we are saying this morning is protect your mental health in your own little way. For your unborn children, do everything you feel you should do as a parent. If you are an absent parent, try and find time to relate with those children. Ask questions. Take time to look through their homework with them. Ask questions about what is happening in their school. And for those that are boarding students, when they come home, ensure you have enough time with them. Many a times, those children face a lot of bullying in school. And of course, they should help us to tell them, even in schools where there are bullying, such affected children should be made to see a psychologist in early enough so that anything that could have affected them adversely can be quickly resolved. And for those that are bullying, well, we will not say they should not be punished, but then the punishment they will be given should commiserate or commiserate with the offense they have committed. This mental health issue is a continuous thing and we cannot uh, we cannot exhaust it in one day, but we'll have yeah. to just drop it here today and hope that we are going to continue this discussion uh, sometimes in the nearest future. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Mike. You're welcome, sir. Okay. So we've Thank been talking you. with uh, Dada Oluwatosin, Chief Nursing Officer, uh, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. We're talking about the fact that teenagers, more and more teenagers, have been diagnosed with uh, depression and mental health issues. And we were trying to see uh, what needs to be done. If you are that person who says catch them young begins with six months sending your child to school, today you know it could be a contributory factor to the mental health of your teenage or adult children. Okay, we'll take a short break and return briefly uh, for the next hot topic. Stay with us.